563 BC, king of Sakya clan of Kapilvastu, Sudodan's son Siddharth Gautam was born in Lumini of present-day Nepal in a garden beneath a sal tree. His mother, Maya Devi, died immediately after giving birth to Buddha. His aunt, Prajapati Gautami, took the responsibilities for his care and nourishment. Since Gautami raised him, some people believe that he was named Gautam after his aunt. Fortune teller Asita announced that Gautam would go through a depression if he encounters with sick, aged, death, and ascetic people and leave the royal palace forever. At last, his prediction turned into reality. Even the luxury, glory, and honor of royal palace, marital relationship with Kolia Princess Isodhara and his son Rahu were not able to stop him. Death, sickness, and aging of people forced him to think deeply. At the age of 29, he left his family and palace to find victory over birth and death. After six years, on the day of Baisak Purnima in Urugula, Gaya of present-day India, near the bank of river Niranjana, he was enlightened with Avish Sambodhi while meditating beneath a Bodhi tree. Truth, Noble Eightfold Path, and Pontesil are the core teachings of Buddhism. Buddha's life is based on these three principles peace, love, truth, brahmacharya, and no intoxication are the five principles of Pontesil in Buddhism. To follow the Pontesil is the main duty of every Buddhist people. According to Hinduism, Buddha is considered as a reincarnation of Lord Vishnu. But Buddha presented a different life scale rather than the ancient Vedic thinking. Buddha contributed to inspire people for spiritual and moral values by thinking over real life problems. He also contributed for social reform by removing bad aspects of Hinduism. That is why even Hindu people respect and believe Buddha as deity of God. Many countries around the world have followed the principles and philosophy of Buddha. Countries around the world followed Buddha's teachings because it was a message of peace. 
by following Buddha's philosophy, principles and message, most countries have succeeded to establish themselves as a successful nation. We should think deeply about this. We feel proud that Gautam Buddha was born in Nepal, but we have violence and unemployment. We are underdeveloped and we cannot even use our self-consciousness. Instead of spreading messages of peace in our own country, we are becoming violent and spreading political influence everywhere. Collaborating with few political leaders, we are used on their direction. Even if it's for a good or bad cause, every organization is influenced by politics. When someone tries to do good, others will be jealous and secure that his or her existence will be destroyed. That is why they deny others good work. This affects people and our country. Nobody has time to think about this. Is this what Buddha praised about? Then why should we feel honorable about Buddha was born in Nepal if we cannot follow the path he showed us? If a foreigner speaks that Buddha was born in their country, then there will be strike, protest, traffic jam and destruction everywhere. After all, who will be affected by this loss? We, Nepalese, don't even have time to realize this. Many countries succeeded to become a successful nation because Buddha's teachings were right. That is why foreigners praise that Buddha was born in our country. But we Nepalese should feel ashamed that we could not realize this. We are ashamed to do a small job and we are unable to find big one. Due to lack of job related to our qualification, lots of educated youngsters are unemployed nowadays. And then they are forced for foreign employment. They are ready to do any kind of job in foreign land, but they don't do the same job here in Nepal because they fear that if their relatives find them doing some minor job, they have to feel the same. A person doing a minor job is always great because he is standing on his own diligence. But in our country, corrupted rich people view such minor, independent and hard-working person as differently. Instead, those corrupted people are respected in the society but hard-working people have no real value. They are not even counted as a person in this society. Is this what Buddha taught us? Even the education sector has same problem. Government schools are being empty every day where only low-income class students are attending. High-class students do not attend government schools. Private schools are filled with lots of students. Is this the duty of our government? Is it right to pay the government schools teacher from nation's treasure to destroy the government schools and promote the private schools? The situation of civil service workers is same like this. Officers are attracted to high-income department only. Making some money 
they think themselves as master of the normal public. In the rural areas, very few officers are found working on government offices. Due to lack of doctors, office helpers are running the hospitals. In the name of different workers' union, there is politics inside the civil service as well. Unions are established for the welfare of civil service workers and easiness of the public service. But they are supporting corrupted officers, forgetting their norms and values. Under the protection of such workers' union, some corrupted officers think themselves as a master of public. Countries around the world love Nepal because Buddha was born here. They are supporting economically for overall development of Nepal and welfare of Nepalese ethnic groups. But the world already knows that even in the country where Buddha was born, there is huge corruption and dirty politics. Not a single political organization is working for the development of the country. Instead, they are working for their own selfishness and using public for their own good. Is this what we learn from Gautam Buddha? Then, what should we feel proud that Gautam Buddha was born in Nepal? Nepal is a country that gave birth to such an enlightened person, such a rebel, intolerance, disturbance and dancing for foreign employment are the major problems. Ten years long, violent armed rebellion took 17,000 innocent lives. Many people were disabled mentally and physically. This incident of the country where Buddha was born has built a shameful history of our nation. Hopefully, this incident will not repeat in the future. To build a better family, society and nation, Buddha's teachings, Four Noble Truths, Eight Noble Four Path and Pontusil are very healthy. For the followers of Buddhism, Lumbini of Nepal is first major pilgrim. To build a peaceful, beautiful and productive Nepal, we should reform the acts of every sector. People from every sector should follow the principles and philosophy of Gautam Buddha. Only then the real importance and the value of our country where Buddha was born will be glorified. And Gautam Buddha will be really respected. This holy music of peace which is played in all both stupas is appealing us to think about Buddha and his teachings. We should not delay any further.
Ani bende ho.